We're here at MacBreak Studio and we're looking at 3D text and some of the ways that 3D text integrates with the larger environment of motion. In particular, we're going to be looking at replicators. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so this combines the concept of 3D text, the concept that you can use symbols uh, as source objects for 3D text, so it doesn't have to be letters, and then the idea of replicators all together, like how when you right. put those together, what do you get? And I'm gonna start from scratch here, so I've got an empty project, I'm gonna hit T for the text tool, I'm gonna click in the canvas, and then before I type anything, I'm gonna go to font book, because in font book, I'm gonna go to my symbol fonts, I've created a, a collection of symbol fonts, but you could also find these by just selecting the user and going down to web dings, uh, it's just an easy way to get there. I'm going to select this little square here, Command C to copy, go back to uh, Motion, and Paste. And there I have my little symbol font. And it's tiny. When I say limbo, little, I mean little. It is pretty small. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the Format tab of the Text Inspector and crank it up. Not really huge. You'll see why in a minute. And the next thing I'm going to do is I want to move its anchor point. So I'm going to control click on it and choose anchor point because, you know, with glyphs, they're not centered by default. And I want this guy to be pretty much centered for what we're going to do next. So I've got this thing that looks like a shape, but it's actually, I'm going to press Q just so it's we're a, back into the glyph. Three chance. It's a glyph. It's not a shape. So because it's a glyph or because it's a font, uh, I can turn on 3D text for it. I can increase the depth of it and I'm gonna apply material. I'm gonna use one of the material presets called Travertine, because I think it's kind of pretty. I'm gonna add a camera by clicking a little camera icon down here, switch to 3D, and then I'll rotate just so we can see that we have a little... Travertine square. A little square there, yeah. I'll also, so one more thing I'm gonna do to it is in the Appearance tab, I'm gonna increase the front edge roundness. So it's just more to, like, it's like a piece of Travertine running. that you would... Yeah, a little, looks like there. a little tile, right? It is, it's a little yeah. tile. So with that guy, I'm going to double click those Orbit um, 3D to reset tools it. up there to reset it. And I'm also going to go to the uh, Properties Inspector and reset those to center it. Although that what, I'm going to have to go back now to the anchor point and move that back up. I just wanted it pretty much in the center. Okay, so now I'm going to replicate it. So the letter L is a keyboard shortcut to create a replicator and it makes a five by five grid by default. And I'm just gonna work with that because my goal here Well, it looks is, like my bathroom uh, tile. Uh, <laughs> I just wanna give you an idea of the kind of things you can do uh, um, with replicators and 3D objects because this is kind of cool. So I have this wall of tiles. Yeah, it's, it's a created, wall of tiles. Wall of tiles. And if I orbit, we can see that's a wall of tiles, it's which is Kind of, kind of neat, yeah, right? Kind of, yeah, it is cool. So now there's various ways we can animate that. And this is, I'm not going to, I don't have a real end goal here except to show a couple ideas of things you could do. So if I go to the replicator inspector, uh, one thing you can talk about is the origin is a center by default. So if I set that to the upper left, and then I go to the angle end parameter, note that 3D is checked by default, which, which isn't normally the case, but because there's a 3D source object, I guess motion realizes that we probably want to do something in 3D. If we were to uncheck that, it would flatten everything out yeah. and yeah, I think make it's it look just really smart weird. To understand that it's yeah, 3D. Exactly. But because it's checked, angle and angle end have um, disclosure triangles, which means if you open them, we have X, Y, and Z instead yep. of just Z. So if I twirl Y, for example, we can do some kind of fun little things with uh, how these lay out. And you can do some fun animations, for instance, per, uh, applying a rate parameter behavior to animate those. So that's just one thing to think about. But another thing is the sequence replicator behavior. Okay? That's so, a magic replicator. Yeah. It's a magic behavior. So rather than going to the library, I'm going to get a little shortcut down at the bottom in the toolbar here to, for behaviors. I'll go to replicator and I'll choose the sequence replicator behavior. I'll move forward in time a little ways and press O to trim it and then Command Option O um, to set a play range out point. And then I want to animate these guys. So uh, in the with the sequence replicator here, sequence replicator behavior selected in the inspector, I'll choose a parameter to animate. I'm going to animate position. And the position I want to animate is not X or Y. I'm going to open this. I want to animate this in Z space to move in Z space. Let me move forward in time to see what I just did. So see how it's now moving toward us? Yeah, a little like Tetris. Yeah, a little like Tetris, exactly, except it's moving toward us instead, yeah, of, down. So instead of down. So I'm, I'm gonna take the whole thing and move it back in space a little bit and move this, move these way forward in space. 
So actually, now it's moving back in space. So that's okay. I'll have it. I'll have it move back in space, <laughs> and I'll have it move back because I'm gonna I'm gonna twirl it around in just a minute. So I'll have it move, move way back in space, and I'll add another parameter. I'm gonna add um, rotation to this. So what I'll do is I'll choose some rotation. I can also open that up, and I can rotate it. Maybe I'll have it flip over 180 degrees in Y and 180 degrees in X. So if I were to play through that now. This will now fly back in space a few pieces at a time. Wow. And it does it, it it's kind of neat, right? Yeah. So I can increase the spread to smooth out that animation and have a smoother animation where they all fly back and form another grid at the back. And if I wanted that to come forwards towards us instead, I could just um, orbit the camera around like this, or at any angle we want, really. And now what we have is that grid flies forward and assembles right in front of the screen. Now because I flipped it around, the, the light doesn't look very good, right. right? So I can go back to the lighting for the 3D text under the Appearance tab and look at the lighting and standard and maybe I do uh, behind, backlit, whoa, well that's really not what we want there. Maybe below, I can just play oh, yeah, there, so that kind of looks interesting. So I can play with different lighting options. So this is just to give you an idea of what's possible by taking a 3D object and sticking it into a replicator and then animating it. So you That's can just, That opens up all these other possibilities of like 3D objects, 3D text that you can then replicate and do some interesting things with. But the key is that sequence uh, replicator behavior that really allows you to do some very, very interesting animations. Yep. Yep, and it goes. It's something just to play with and, and start to figure out how you can incorporate these into your own into your own projects. So just something to think about and, and play with in uh, in your projects. Oh, awesome! Okay, so more motion info. You want to check out our YouTube channel, uh, Mark's. I think we're up to close to thirty uh, videos on your motion, and uh, he's got we got on, some, the, on the motion on under the motion five. under five. That's what I meant. Motion under five. Plus, you have all this motion training at RippleTraining.com. Uh, we're just going to continue to push the envelope with all the things you can do in motion. We think motion is, is, is just a great tool, and not just because it's, it creates uh, effects for Final Cut, but in its own right, you can do some pretty amazing things. So thanks, Mark, for that tip. Uh, thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. Uh, we'll see you next week.